Hello guys. Uh, so today uh, we'll discuss with the new topic that is the dentine bonding agent. So in your NEET exam, you can expect at least one question from this topic. Starting with the introduction part, bonding systems have been in continued development for dentistry for more than 60 years since acid etching was introduced. As previously I have told you that acid etching was a very important topic. Actually the name of the inventor is very important and the year in which the acid etching technique was introduced is also very important. Initially there was no bonding system. Enamel only bonding system which separates enamel bonding and dentine bonding systems and now to combine enamel or dentine bonding systems. Currently bonding systems now are optimized to work well on dentine. So what are the criteria for ideal dentine bonding system? In 1961 at a workshop held at the University of Indiana Dental Schools Phillips and Reg, it provides a high bond strength to dentine that should be present immediately after placement and that should be permanent provide a bond strength to dentine similar to that of enamel it shows a good biocompatibility to the dental tissues including the pulp it minimizes micro leakage at the margins of restorations prevent recurrent caries and marginal staining be easy to use and minimal technique sensitive poses a good shelf life be compatible with a wide range of resins the systems should not be toxic or sensitizing to the operators or the patients bonding agents should seal tooth surfaces from the oral fluids coming on to the bonding of bonding to enamel as I've already told you that it is a very important question that acid etch technique was introduced by Bionicor in year 1955 very important at least hundred times increase in retention when enamel was etched with the phosphoric acid characteristics of the enamel etched was the honeycomb appearance the honeycomb patterns that is the frosty appearance which has the high surface energy and more than the twice of the unetched enamel. Surface area also increases by almost 200 times. Bonding to enamel. From micromechanical retention by there are steps, certain step. Number one is the acid etching. Second is the applied resin adhesive which is an unfilled resin or low viscosity filled resin. So basically the micro mechanical retention is in the form of the resin tags, very important. So resin enamel interface. Resin can wet the surface and penetrate to the micro porosity. Resin be polymerized to form 10 to 20 micrometer, that is the resin tag. See, resin surface can wet the surface and penetrates to microporosity. Can you see this? These are the resin tags. These small, these are the micro tags. Can you see this small one? These are the micro tags which are small in size. And these are the macro tags. Can you see this? These are larger in size. So basically what is the structure of dentine? Dentine it is a vital and a dynamic tissue. Dentinal tubules are large near the pulp but small near the enamel. These are more organic and water content than enamel are more hydrophilic. Hydrophilic means water loving. These, uh, the dentine have the low surface energy. These are the intratubular dentine. This is the peritubular dentine. 
and these and these are the intertubular dentine intertubular dentine a short intratubular dentine is large bonding to dentine differs from bonding to enamel dentine has more organic substance than enamel as you all know there is a smear layer and a smear plug covering the dentinal tubules which consists of three steps that is etching priming and bonding bonding to dentine etching and achieve hybrid layer first step is etch the dentine which causes the demineralization of dentine second is the dentine primer you have to uh, apply the primer which improves the dentine resin wettability primer it has bi function it is hydrophilic and hydrophobic it is water loving also and it is water repelling also monoamer bi function monomers third adhesive or it is bonding best gma or modified monomers are used etching the dentine remove the smear layer remove inorganic substances in the dentine create space for the penetration of resin this is the photograph of a demineralized dentine so what is dentine primer using the difunctional chemical the coupling agent it is the rest it is the dentine it is we apply the dentine primer it has the hydrophobic end which is water repelling it is the hydrophilic end which is water loving one part can bond with the dentine that is hydrophilic and the hydrophilic end it is bond with the dentine part the other attaches to the resin this one this part is attached to the resin this is hydrophobic water repelling so a question in your eipg exam has been asked from this particular topic and the question was please listen carefully the dentine bond the mcq was the dentine bonding has a tooth hydrophilic and a hydrophobic end hydrophilic end binds with your answer is collagen of dentine same way your hydrophilic ends binds with collagen of dentine this question was recently asked in your neat exam it was recently asked in your neat exam so dentine primer and phenyl glycine glis uh, glis dimethyl acrylate it is npg or the gma is glycidyl meth acrylate it is npg or gma is the earliest molecule to use for this purpose n phenyl glycine group bonds to the calcium ions of the tooth bond strength when bonding to enamel is stronger than bonding to dentine very important line the new generation of dentine primers try to bond with the collagen in dentine collagen has several reactive group that is the hydroxyl and the amine group primer can bond with the dentine by means of bonding to collagen which creates the hybrid layer as i have already told you that it when you apply the dentine primer its hydrophilic part get attached to dentine its hydrophobic end gets attached to the restorative resin and by this it forms a dentine hybrid layer these are the resin tags these are this is the dentine hybrid layer can you see this this is the dentine hybrid layer so coming on to the bonding or bonding to dentine collagen plays an important role in bonding of dent resin to dentine 
After etching process, the dentine surface should be moist but not wet. Over dry dentine leads to collagen collapse. This is the space. This this is the space between the collagen fiber 115 to 20 nanometer in the moist dentine. So bonding of the resin to the tooth structure is a result of four possible mechanics that is mechanical diffusion absorption and the combination starting with the mechanical the penetration of the resin and the formation of resin tags within the tooth surface in diffusion there is precipitation of substances on the tooth surface to which the resin monomers can bond mechanically or chemically absorption chemical bonding to the inorganic component that is your hydroxyapatite crystals or the inorganic component mainly type 1 collagen of the tooth structure. Fourth one is the combination of the previous three mechanisms. So what all are the requirements for the optimal bond? The, it should have a clean substrate surface. Apply adhesive well to the substrate good adaptation to the substrate adhesive should be well cured or polymerized enough strength to resist the intraoral forces the effect of acid etch depends upon the kind of acid used the concentration the etch time or the rinse time the form of etching it either we use the gel form the semi gel or the echo solution enamel structure and composition primary or permanent teeth prism structure or prismless structure fluoridated demineralized or the stained enamel now classification early generation dentine bonding agents that bonded to the smear layer first generation dentine bonding system that bonded to the smear layer second generation debonding system that is modified it removed smear layer third generation debonding system it removed it modified or removed smear layer and produced the hl hybrid layer fourth generation it optimized for your smear layer plus dentine wetting fifth generation reduced or the component of the bonding system and reduce the component with the self etching primers. Sixth generation debonding system, uh, your uh, dentine bonding system is true one component bonding system. Historically, dentine bonding agents have been categorized into three generations of the products based on the chemistry and the manner in which they treat the smear layer. The first generation products were early, largely unsuccessful attempts as at producing a bond between the dentine and the resin. They essentially ignored the smear layer. The second generation depends upon the smear layer for bonding, but in the third, they remove the smear layer. Coming on to the first generation dentine bonding systems, these products ignore the smear layer. They include NPG GMA, the polyurethanes and the cyanoacrylase. Examples the SSY Servident which became available in 1965. The bond strength of this first generation dentine bonding agent was on the order to 2 to 3 megapascal. Clinical trials on these products were largely disappointing and the failure rate of 50% was seen. Additional problem with them included loss of bond strength over time, lack of stability of individual component during storage. Coming on to the second generation dentine bonding system, these system leave the smear layer largely, if not wholly intact when used. Performed better than first generation bonding agents. They routinely produced bond strength 
that ranged from approximately 4.5 to 6 megapascals very important values you have to mark it up failure rates 30 percent at one year developed and marked in the late 1970s and early 1980s there were three types of second generation products H tubule dentine bonding agents, phosphate ester dentine bonding agents, H tubule dentine bonding agents attempt to achieve the retention to dentine by etching the tubules with 25% of the citric acid and employing ethyl methacrylate to mechanically interlock with the etched tubules. Representative, representative brand was deep dentine bonding system Denmet. Phosphate ester dentine bonding agents, in, these are the analog of BIS GMA with attached phosphate esters. The phosphate group of the dentine bonding agent apparently bonded with the calcium. They were bonded, they were etched with a 25% of the citric acid, they were bonded with the calcium in the tooth structure and the methacrylate end of the molecule bonding to composite resin. Most of the system of this type employed a mild cleanser to modify the smear layer. Bond strength were approximately 10% to 30% as strong as the edge enamel to resin bonds. Representative brands were bond light your Prisma, Universal Bond and the Scotch Bond by 3M. Coming on to the third generation dentine bonding system, these system alter or remove the smear layer. See first and second bonding agents were dentine bonding agents were including the smear layer but third one they just remove the smear layer and produce a bond strength of about 16 to 26 megapascals. Some of the products produce bond strength approaching those formed to enamel. Clinical retention rate is 100% at 2 years. Usually a 3 component system consists of a conditioner, a primer and an adhesive. Conditioner acts as a cleanser and an agent. It is usually a weak organic acid, example the malic acid, a low concentration of stronger inorganic acid that is phosphoric or nitric acid or a gelatin agent such as EDTA. The main action is heavily alters or remove the smear layer, demineralize peritubular and intertubular surface dentine and thereby exposes collagen fibrils. Primer act as an adhesion promoter, adhesion enhancer, bifunction monomer which is hydrophilic in nature monomer. It is usually a bifunction monomer such as acetone or alcohol. A bifunction monomer is so one that is hydrophilic that is the water loving and the hydrophobic and that is the water repelling. Example the bifunctional monomers include HEMA, NMSA, NPG, 4 meta. Third is adhesive that is the bonding resin or the sealing resin. It is an unfilled or a partially filled resin may contain some component of the primer example HEMA. In an attempt to promote increased bond strength, their main actions were combined with the primers monomers to form a resin reinforced hybrid layer which ranges from 1 to 5 micron thick. They forms the resin tag which helps to seal the dentine tubules. They provide the methacrylic group to bond with the subsequently placed resin composites. Coming on to the classification of dentine adhesive, total etching system, self etching system. Total etching system comprises of etching, priming, bonding plus etching, priming plus bonding in one. Self etching etching plus primer in one and then bonding and last is the etching plus priming plus bonding in one bottle system.
So totally H system that is three bottle system or three step agent usually is phosphoric acid as you know 37% of phosphoric acid. First apply agent. First apply agent for 15 seconds and then rinse out with the water and dry a gentle layer and air blow. Second apply primer, then apply low air blow, finally apply bonding and then light cure for 20 to 40 seconds. This procedure you all know very well. Total it system, two bottle system, two step scotch bond. It is the agent, it is the adhesive single bond. Self etched system. H agent usually is acidic monomer of the primer, no rinsing water is to use. Self etching system, two bottles, two bottles, two steps. Self etch system or self etching primers, two bottles, two steps. A great advantage is that self etching primers are designed to be used on dry dentine, not on the wet dentine. Although one should not over desiccate dentine, the dentine surface can be briefly dried following cavity preparation because the dentine is mineralized. This avoids all issues of how moist or wet the dentine should be prior to bonding. It is far easier to produce uniform dryness than it is uniform wetness. Another advantage of the self etching primer system is that they do not etch very far into the dentine beneath the smear layer. This avoids removal of smear plugs in the dentinal tubule. <coughs> Excuse me, and seems to be responsible for the lack of post operative sensitivity, which is associated with these technique insensitive adhesive systems. The shallow edge ensures good resin infiltration. Even though the hybrid layer is thin, the resin dentine bond strengthens are very high. Now comes the latest self H1 bottle, all the three in one. Self H1 bottle system, all in one. All you can expect a question from this part only, and the hydrophilic and hydrophobic end. All in one self etching, self priming, self adhesive system such as the Prom L Pop 3M SP. One up bond F Tokoyama Corporation. Unifil bond, GC corporation, etc. are more acidic, pH less than 1 than self etching primer. Hence, they etch more deeply. They are also more hydrophilic and tend to produce adhesive film that are overly thin. Very important. It is desirable to have a thicker layer that is of 50 micro layer of cured adhesive dentine between the resin composite and hybrid layer to avoid the problems associated with the oxygen inhibited layers and serve as shock absorber very important point you can expect an mcq the second problem with all-in-one adhesive is that even if they are thick enough to polymerize their composition is very acidic and very hydrophilic These are the schematic showing that the smear layer are made up of microscopic cutting debris burnished on the dentine. So total etching not only removes the smear layer, it also removes all of the mineral from around the collagen fibers in the matrix. After rinsing the sphagety like collagen, these are the sphagety like collagen, right? Spaghetti like collagen fibrils are suspended in water. If the surface is dried, the, fibr the fibrils collapse upon themselves, decreasing the size of interfibrillar spaces that are necessary for resin uptake. 
the water used in wet bonding or in primers re-expand the collapse matrix when the total etch technique is coupled with the wet bonding preparing it for resin uptake so critical steps in adhesion enamel etching which when you etch the enamel you get the frosty appearance in deciduous you get the prismless enamel need for in deciduous you need to etch for longer time dentine conditioning if the dentine is too dry the collagen collapse the primer can't penetrate if it is too moist it the dilute primer interfere the resin penetration clinical application it is used for the composite filling it is used with the resin cement cementation for cast resin and ceramic restoration for amalgam fillings pet and fish sealants desensitization it act as a stintine sealer bonding system for ceramics ceramic surfaces prepared step 1 is hydrofluoric acid you can etch the surface of the ceramic with the 9.6% of hf that is hydrofluoric acid step 2 is silane coupling agent is used difunctional molecule bond strength is 20 to 40 megapascal advantages of adhesion conservative treatment reduction of micro leakage leads to secondary caries and marginal stain pulp pathology may cause hypersensitivity promote strength of materials aesthetic desensitization that seals the dentinal tubule failure of adhesion the crack formation and the propagation can you see this the crack formation trapped air bubbles place of poor wetting bubbles with adhesive curing shrinkage pores cohesive failure and adhesive failure see the crack formation and the propagation leads to the interfacial contamination which leads to the excess moisture trapped air bubbles and places of poor wetting bubbles with the adhesive curing shrinkage pore it leads to the cohesive failure and the adhesive failure so this is all about the dentine bonding systems dentine bonding agent you can expect at least one question from this topic so you should be thorough you should be practiced yes at last i am still explaining and i'm still explaining a mcq which was there in your eipg exam and the mcq was your dentine bonding agent has both hydrophilic and hydrophobic end but your hydrophobic ends bind with your answer will be the collagen of dentine this is all about the dentine bonding system thank you